incomparable and just a little story. And instead of a ceiling and a vast sky, we had a background. And we had drapery. And we had change. And we had interior decorating. <laughs> we had arranging, we had opinions, we had style. And then something incredible began to rise out of nowhere, and really from no place in particular. A little idea, a little inspiration, a little soul, a little spirit. It touched down upon the apple, and it began to whisper into the core. What if? How about? Wouldn't it be nice? You know what I see? I'd like to see. I think it could be. I wonder why. How about? Why not? That's what I think. How about you? Why not? Found words went to the core of the apple, and the apple began to quake and shake with all the possibilities that had been heard from inside of that little flying thing. Well, and before you knew it, something new was coming up from the inside of the apple. <laughs> Another little worm came up nearby. 
Said he with the wiggle, you're a cute little worm. Let's you and I go out for a squirm. I could easily fall in love with you if you'd consent to a rendezvous. But the cute little worm just shook its head and to the big fat worm it said, no rendezvous between us two, cause I'm the other end of you. <laughs> So ended day three, and the brown world outside the frame, looking down, said, it is good. Ah, but on day four, things began to change even more. And the brown turned to a glow, and everything began to flow, and the worm came up. And the worm looked at itself and saw something special there. Excuse me, ma'am. Is it just you, your little self, that's turning me on, or am I looking at the feminine side of myself? I don't know, big boy. But what I'd like to say is, when I see you, I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky come tumbling down. <laughs> now the worms are hermaphroditic. For you that don't know, that means that they have both a male and a female part. And in hard times, they are capable of running together and, and making more worms by themselves. <laughs> Of course, they prefer partners, and that leads us, of course, to the worm personals. <laughs> I'll read you a few. Searching. Long, fat body looking for same to wrap around. Call tequila. <laughs> Here's another one. Tall MFM looking for same. Switch hitter. <laughs> Size unimportant, not into fishing, love dirt. <laughs> See me squirm. And there started to be little holes in the apple. Dark spots. Where the chewing and the gooing had gone on. And all the little apples and all the little worms started to get together and they started to run. They started to bite. They started to go deep inside the apple and they started to eat seed. And the big sky outside the frame looked down and said, Oh no, this shall not be. I'm not gonna lay a commandment down on all of ye. There won't be no squiggling around. Won't be no biting into the apple. Won't be no sitting on the sea. Won't be no spitting, back, chewing, and swallowing sea. You hear me now? And that's how we ended day number four. Oh, but it did not stop. The rubbing went around, full of all kinds of new angles and piercings and cuttings. The great one outside of the frame looked down and said, this cannot be. I'm going to lay a terrible curtain down on ye. I'm going to put on you the wigger and disease. You're not going to shake around. You're not going to battle that seat down on me. I'm going to give it to you. Make you hurt. Five slipped away until we came to day six. And the color fled right out of the world. And the apple sat all alone. And the worms had withered and gone. Except for a few. Healthy ones. Strong ones. Well-decorated ones. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them healthy way worms looked down into the pool of black below him and said, I don't want to die. You will. I don't want my friends to die. Not like that. Not wasting away. Some will. You know, life is like a flower. It takes a long time to come to the point where it blooms. Then it fades all too quickly. And then what? You know. 
know there would be so much interest in, in swallowing seed and rubbing and all that. There is. And so much condemnation. So much sadness and sorrow. Now you know. You know, in the middle of all this, I know what I think. I don't care what the sexual preference of the partner is. It's the quality of the love. That's what matters. The quality of the loving. I think you've said it all. And the apple heard the words of the small little worm. And again, deep inside it, its own seeds began to bloom. And something that had never happened began to happen. Beautiful, fresh, and new. And in the middle of the darkness came something light and beautiful. And so ended day six. And you know that white little spot that bloomed from the seeds from the inside of the apple grew. Day seven was a shining, bright world full of possibilities and new things. And the apple seemed to be different. Why, he rose and fell and moved around and seemed to have consciousness itself. Can you remember the little worm? <laughs> now, he was brighter and taller, and wherever he went, he wore oh. a little hat. <laughs> story anyway. And how will the story end? For indeed, this is the last day. And the tale is about to end. We sit here, sitting in our own little frames, all of us, wondering what this is all about. What art can give us? And what theater can contribute to our life? Well, I'd like to suggest something to you came to me from a little mom. 365 apples may indeed keep the doctor away, but you might need a little bit more protection. <laughs> and you might want to remember a few little things.